Police are actively searching for a man who they believe beat his mother to death last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. How the Balcones Heights Police Chief describes their latest homicide. And we have more on a critical piece of evidence found by detectives in the case of the man accused of being the medical center rapist. And live cam giving us a peek outside. Much different picture than it was yesterday. We don't have any rain in the area, but it is a bit colder. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And midweek greetings to you. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is January 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Grab your coat because you're going to need it this morning. Yeah, and rain is still in the forecast. Mike joined us now. What's going on over there? Well, we do have a little bit of rain tomorrow. I don't think this is going to be a big deal. Most of the uh, kind of nuisance rain, uh, the majority of it's going to be down along the, the coastal plain tomorrow and then into Friday. But as far as today goes, let's talk about this. It's just beautiful out there. And yes, it feels like January again. We've got clear skies. We've got temperatures. We're down to 40. 45 now in town, 42 Bandera, 38 Lost Maples, 45 also at Randolph, and the warm spot on this map is Floresville at 50. There is a bit of a wind chill, though. We still have a decent breeze out there right now. It feels like 39 out at the airport, so definitely bundle up 35 up the road in Bernie. Winds are still about 10, close to 15 miles per hour, and we'll keep a, enough of a breeze around throughout the day to where you want to keep your jacket handy throughout the day. Mold yesterday was on the high side. Mountain Cedar moderate. I have a feeling these two may kind of flip-flop a little bit. Mold with the drier air should be going down, but Mountain Cedar with those northwesterly winds probably going to be getting a good shake, even though we're sort of getting toward the tail end of the season. Temperatures, I think we'll drop down a few more degrees in the next uh, hour or so, and we still have that wind chill to deal with. And then beautiful, just a, a gorgeous day, deep blue skies today. We make it up into the uh, mid to upper 50s at noon, and then we'll top off at 62 today, which is actually a couple of degrees below normal. Beautiful day, no complaints here. Keep a jacket handy. Uh, you'll definitely want one the next couple of days because not only do we have the chance for a little bit of rain, but temperatures will be about 10 degrees cooler for high temperatures tomorrow. We'll take a look at the head to the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and had a few problems earlier this morning. The map looks pretty clear. Is that Everything's cleared up for the moment, so right, right now things look great out there, Mike. No issues, no delays in anyone's travel time. So as we switch over to TransGuide, folks, this is what you can expect up on the northeast side, 35, 410, looking pretty good. Steady streams on the southbound main lanes. Now 37 and Jones Avenue, both north and southbound lanes, starting to get a few more vehicles out there, but no congestion evident up there, 281 at 410, up there by the airport. And then 21 and Grayson, north and southbound lanes, running smoothly right now. Mark? Thank you, sir. This morning, police continue to look for the man who they think was responsible for beating his 76-year-old mother to death. Happened late last night at the at Balcones Heights apartment complex, the Spanish Keys over on Babcock. Sarah Costa is live at the complex with a description of the suspect. Sarah? Good morning, Mark. And the man that police say they are looking for is 55-year-old Michael Wayne Kerbo, who they believe is responsible for beating his 76-year-old mother to death. The Balcones Heights police chief John Jahanara says they first got the call around seven last night from the victim asking police to help her kick her son out of her apartment after the two got into an argument. When police arrived, Kerbo had already left. Then police say around 11 o'clock last night, it was a friend of Kerbo that called police from a gas station across the street after Kerbo mentioned his mother might need a welfare check. He had a friend call uh, for him and the friend notified us and let us know that uh, there was uh, possibly injuries or she had passed away, which is um, uh, the victim. And uh, so once our officers made location, Mr. Kerbo was nowhere to be found. When police arrived, they found the 76 year old woman badly beaten and dead. Chief Jahanara described the scene as horrific and say they actively are continuing to search for Michael Wayne Kerbo, that 55 year old suspect this morning. Live from Balcones Heights, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Take a look at your screen, everybody. San Antonio police need your help to find an elderly woman who has disappeared and may be in danger. 82-year-old Rita Brown was last seen in the 12,500 block of Paloma Trail on Monday. She was driving her white 2019 Buick Encore with a Texas license plate of LWM7486. She is right-handed, 
with a straight shoulder length, shoulder length hair, I should say, that's usually in a ponytail. If you have any information, call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit. Well, what prosecutors say was a critical piece of evidence, a gold watch was found by detectives during a search of an apartment of Anton Harris. He's on trial. He's accused of being the medical center rapist. According to testimony of the detectives on scene, that's not all police found in Harris's bedroom. Paul Venema in court as prosecutors take the jury along for that search. Anton Harris was 16 years old when the series of rapes began. He was arrested in June 2017 following his graduation from Marshall High School, where he was a star basketball player. He always said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and, and uh, was polite. We never had any type of uh, issues with him. Olandek, Harris's basketball coach, provided police with a big break in the rape cases. He was shown this picture taken from a gas station security camera near the apartment complex where a woman had been raped. When I first saw the picture, I looked at the face and I thought it, it looked uh, like Anton. And when I scanned the rest of the picture and saw his legs because uh, he's wearing shorts, um, I, I knew it was Anton at that time. With that identification, detectives obtained a warrant and searched an apartment that Harry shared with his family in the medical center area. There was like a rose gold colored uh, fossil watch um, that had like a, a gemmed face to it. That fit the description of a watch the woman Harris is on trial for raping said was stolen when she was attacked as she entered her medical center apartment on May 28th of 2017. The search also turned up two guns, a knife, and a gray hoodie. In most of the rapes, the victims reported that they were attacked by a slim African-American male wearing a gray hoodie who brandished either a knife or a pistol. This trial, as complex cases often do, has been moving slowly. This is the second week. Best guess for closing arguments, Thursday. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. We plan to debrief Paul about this story coming up today on GMSA at 9. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an in-depth look at the case and how it unfolded. You can also get the full story right now on the KSAT TV app. That's available for download to your streaming device. The Texas Historical Commission wants more time before deciding on approval of the city's request to move the cenotaph that sits near the Alamo. The Texas Historical Commission is asking the city to give more information on the project, including more explanation on why it should be moved and a list of any potential alternate sites where the monument could be placed. The City Council and the Historic and Design Review Commission already approved the relocation a few hundred feet away as part of a larger plan to redesign Alamo Plaza. The commission hopes to get the information during its next meeting on March 24th and 25th. 607, lots of questions still remain for lawmakers in President Trump's impeachment trial. Over the next couple of days, senators will be allowed to submit questions to the House managers or the president's counsel, but not both. Moving forward, all the attention now centered around potential witnesses and Republican leader Mitch McConnell telling members in a closed door meeting he does not have the votes to block potential witnesses from appearing. Four key Senate Republicans say they want to hear from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bolton's upcoming book links President the President to withholding aid from Ukraine in exchange for investigating former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, none of the latest on the coronavirus scare. A plane with as many as 240 evacuated Americans landed at March Air Force Base outside Los Angeles this morning. The government chartered that plane to get American citizens and diplomats out of Wuhan, China, which is the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. The CDC will quarantine the Americans for three days in California. China has cut off access to Wuhan and 16 other cities to prevent people from leaving and spreading the virus further. Also in response, both the University of Texas and Texas A&M have suspended student travel to the affected country. Air carriers, United Airlines, and British Airways have also suspended any flights to mainland China. Back here at home, still time to donate blood and help replenish the dangerously low supplies in San Antonio. This week, our KSAC community partners holding a blood drive with University Health System. Process takes about 30 minutes and each donation can impact three lives. Well, if you want to donate, just head to the University Hospital, which is in the 4500 block of Medical Drive. Donor rooms are typically open from 8.30 in the morning until 5 in the evening, and they will stay open later today until 7 p.m. And for you early risers, like us here on GMSA, donor rooms will open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 on Friday. For more information, go to KSAT.com. Click on the KSAT Community tab.
Here's some stories trending right now on KSAT.com. This gorgeous nearly $8 million mansion for sale in Bernie might make you feel like you're in Italy. It sits on 17 acres, has a double wrought iron gate that leads up to the four bedroom, four bathroom property. If you ever dreamed of 25 foot ceilings and a giant brick oven, pizza oven rather, this just might be your dream home. And more than 50 Longhorn cattle will fill the streets of downtown San Antonio Saturday morning, kicking off this year's San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The 13th annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive begins at 11 a.m. at I-35 and Houston Street, following a route through downtown that ends at La Villita. Would you like a VIP experience? Well, we are hosting KSAC Corral. It's an event that lets you enjoy the festivities up close while mingling with some of the KSAC folks like us. We have the info plus maps and the parade route on KSAT.com.